As the old saying goes, music has charms to soothe the savage breast. Ironically, though, some of the most savage people around are the very musicians that give us such wonderful music. Sure, most singers are perfectly nice people, but some of the biggest stars in music are also some of the biggest jerks around. Here's a look at some respected musicians who were awful people. Morrissey spews hate. After rising to fame as the lead singer of 80s sad sacks The Smiths, the man known as Morrissey became even more famous for spouting a non-stop stream of garbage in the press. Some of his biggest hits include telling The Guardian, you can't help but feel that the Chinese are a subspecies, shrugging off a massacre that left 77 people dead as nothing compared to what happens in McDonald's every day, blaming Kate Middleton for the suicide of a nurse, and calling for Elton John's head so he could serve it on a plate. Morrissey was also dismissive of the sexual assault victims in the Harvey Weinstein scandal, telling The Independent, I hate sexual situations that are forced on someone. But in many cases, one looks at the circumstances and thinks that the person who is considered a victim is merely disappointed. The Killer Rock and roll legend Jerry Lee Lewis is famous for three things. His music, his violent temper, and marrying his 13-year-old cousin, who was just the third of his seven wives. Just how he got the nickname The Killer is unclear, though Lewis claims it has nothing to do with the time he tried to strangle one of his teachers with a necktie. It also predates the incident where he shot his own bass player in the chest, or the time he showed up at Graceland drunk and waving a gun. He swore he had no intention of harming anyone, but Elvis disagreed and called the police. Can you really blame him? The Many Sins of Miles Davis Jazz legend Miles Davis redefined music itself, but he also redefined what it means to be a misanthrope. Some of his lesser offenses include his massive vanity, as the star would condemn critics for praising other artists claiming they were just out to take away his spotlight. Much more serious were the heroin and cocaine addictions. In order to support his costly habits, Davis became a pimp. You did a lot of bad things. Like what? I think you said you were pimping for a while. Is that bad? The habit. And his addictions may have contributed to a lifetime of domestic violence and spousal abuse. Ex-wife Frances Davis has claimed she wasn't just terrified of him, she ran away a few times convinced he was going to kill her. He admitted to the whole sordid trend of beating his wives in his autobiography, Miles, and even admitted he approved of other men hitting their wives and girlfriends to keep them in line. Lead Belly's Hard Heart Though he died in 1949, the influence of blues pioneer Lead Belly lives on. George Harrison once said, No Lead Belly, no Beatles. And without him, rock and roll as we know it may never have existed. Still, Lead Belly was a bad man. Born Huddy Ledbetter in 1888, he did several stretches in jail, starting with 30 days on a chain gang in 1915 for getting in a particularly violent fight. Two years later, he was arrested again, this time for killing his cousin's husband and nearly killing another. He was pardoned in 1925, but went back in jail in 1930, this time for a stabbing in what Black History Now says was assault with intent to murder. It was during this stint that he was discovered by a pair of musicologists who were recording songs for the Smithsonian, and Lead Belly recorded hundreds for them. The rest of his life was a combination of performing at venues of all sizes across the country and more time in jail. There was another stabbing incident in 1939, assault in 1940, you get the picture. He was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease only months before he died from it, leaving behind a very dark and complicated legacy. Alexander Scriabin Dances with the Devil Alexander Scriabin was a Russian composer who was touched by both genius and madness. After becoming interested in religious philosophy and the occult, he became more and more convinced he was destined to change the world, and by change he meant bring about the end times. He started writing a massive composition called The Mysterium, which Gramophone says he envisioned as a week-long multimedia event including music, dance, lights, poetry, perfumes and incenses that would be performed once in the Himalayan mountains. He hoped the performance would trigger the apocalypse and that humanity would be replaced by nobler beings. After fiddling with the work for over a decade, though, his plans were thwarted in the most anticlimactic way possible in 1915. He cut himself shaving, got infected, and died. 